from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! broadcasting from Washington, D.C. We were allowed to shoot whatever we wanted. It was deemed to be a free fire zone. So we would roll through the town and anything that we saw, everything that we saw, we engaged it and opened fire on everything. In less than a minute, put 200 rounds from his 50 caliber machine gun into that vehicle. That day he killed a mother, a father, and two children. The boy was age four and the daughter was age three. Winter Soldier. As we mark the fifth anniversary of the invasion of Iraq this week, we continue to bring you the voices of U.S. veterans and active duty soldiers from Iraq and Afghanistan, testifying about the horrors of war. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Federal Reserve's decision to bail out the investment bank Bear Stearns is coming under criticism from housing advocates who say the Bush administration has done too little to help homeowners facing foreclosure. Over the weekend, the Fed took extraordinary measures to help J.P. Morgan purchase Bear Stearns and save the nation's fifth largest investment bank from collapse. As part of the deal, the Fed put up $30 billion to guarantee Bear Stearns' riskiest investments. Jim Carr of the National Community Reinvestment Coalition said, quote, it's almost stunning to witness the showing up of a major, the shoring up of a major financial institution, but not addressing the problem that the quality of housing assets is deteriorating with each minute we wait. On Monday, reporters questioned White House Press Secretary Dana Perino about the bailout. The people who are facing, say, foreclosures, individual, the little guys who are facing their foreclosure, are looking at the big guys getting government, if not brokered, certainly over, they're overseeing uh, and, and deals that are engineered to, to sort of keep the big picture financial community afloat. And they're saying, well, where's, where's, where's my boost of liquidity? They're going to get that boost of liquidity um, in the form of a stimulus package and a tax rebate that's coming to them the second week of May. President Bush praised the Federal Reserve's actions. One thing is for certain, uh, we're, under challenge, we're in challenging times, but another thing is for certain that we've taken um, strong and decisive action. The Federal Reserve has moved quickly to uh, bring order to the financial markets. Uh, Secretary Paulson has been, um, is supportive of that action, uh, as am I. And uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Secretary, for working over the weekend. Concern is also growing. Other investment banks could face possible collapse. On Monday, shares in Lehman Brothers plunged 20 percent, its biggest ever one-day fall. The Federal Reserve has reportedly urged other leading financial institutions to support Lehman Brothers in order to prevent a further economic crisis. This is market analyst James Hughes. What the fears are that the, the other banks, which maybe haven't written down so much, uh, the fear is that they're hiding these subprime mortgage issues, and maybe hiding is the wrong word, but they're, they're, they're putting them somewhere else so we don't necessarily get the whole picture. But unfortunately, these things will come out, and that is the fear that there's going to be yet more write-downs and more problems coming along. And of course, Bear Stearns is now turning into the, uh, the U.S.'s northern rock at the moment, and, and of course, the fears are that there's more going to go that way. And in other economic news, shareholders of a private equity firm connected to Carlyle Group has voted to shut down the firm, Carlyle Capital, after the value of the fund collapsed. Meanwhile, Alan Grants Greenspan, the former chair of the Federal Reserve, said the current economic crisis is, quote, likely to be judged in retrospect as the most wrenching since the end of the Second World War. In Iraq, a female suicide bomber killed at least 42 people near a mosque in Karbala Monday, while Vice President Dick Cheney was making a surprise visit to Iraq. Despite the ongoing violence, Cheney claimed the 2003 U.S. invasion of Iraq has been a success. We'll feel, reflect back on those five years. I think it's been a, uh, a difficult, challenging, but a nonetheless successful endeavor. And uh, that we've come a long way in five years and that it's been... Uh, well worth the effort. I'm pleased to be able to return uh, next week to Washington and report to the president that uh, we are making significant progress in Iraq. Republican presidential candidate John McCain shared a similar analysis based on his trip to Iraq. We find a, we find a continued success of the strategy, continued training and equipping of the 
Iraqi military and them functioning more efficiently. Wednesday marks the fifth anniversary of the 2003 U.S. invasion. Amnesty International says the current human rights situation in Iraq is disastrous. In a new report, Amnesty said, quote, hundreds of people are being killed every month in the pervasive violence, while countless lives are threatened every day by poverty, cuts to power and water supplies, food and medical shortages, and rising violence against women and girls. The International Committee of the Red Cross warned Monday the humanitarian situation in Iraq remains among the most critical in the world. 27 million Iraqis have no functioning water or sanitation facilities. The Red Cross says Iraq's health care system is now in its worst shape ever. In campaign news, Florida Democrats have decided not to hold a do-over primary election after voters responded negatively to a proposal for a vote by mail. Primary. Meanwhile, efforts in Michigan to hold a revote have stalled. Both states have already held their nominating contests, but the Democratic National Committee refuses to seat their delegates after they moved up their primary dates. Senator Barack Obama is planning to give what's been described as a major speech on race today. Obama is expected to repeat his denunciations of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright, Obama's former pastor at the Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago. On Friday, Obama removed Wright from his religious advisory committee and called some of Wright's statements inflammatory and appalling. Over the weekend, Wright has been scrutinized in the media for praising Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan for linking the attacks of September 11th to U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East and for saying the country was founded on racism. Obama has described Wright as his spiritual mentor. Wright married him and his wife, baptized their two daughters, and blessed their Chicago house. There's been a major development in the case of death row prisoner Troy Davis. On Monday, the Georgia Supreme Court refused to reopen his case and to allow him to present new evidence of his innocence. In 1991, Davis was convicted of murdering a white police officer, but since then, many questions have been raised about his case. The murder weapon was never found. There's no DNA evidence or other physical evidence. Seven of the nine non-police witnesses said they were coerced by police and have since recanted their testimony. In media news, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear an appeal from the Federal Communications Commission on the use of vulgar words on the airwaves. Last year, a federal court sided with the nation's four main television networks in a suit against the FCC's expanded enforcement of the indecency law. The court ruled the FCC could not punish networks for broadcasting fleeting expletives. And finally, in New York, David Patterson has been sworn in as governor, replacing Elliot Spitzer. Patterson becomes New York's first African-American governor and the first blind governor in the country. During a speech Monday, Patterson made no mention of Spitzer. Tell you a little about myself. I was born in the borough of Brooklyn. I was educated on Long Island. Harlem is my home. Where I... This is where I learned love for family and appreciation for community. I have confronted the prejudice of race and challenged the issues of my own disability. I have served in government for over two decades. I stand willing and able to lead this state to a brighter future and a better tomorrow. Let me reintroduce myself. I am David Patterson, and I am the governor of New York State. In, in what might be a first, Patterson admitted on his first day in office he and his wife have had extramarital affairs. In an interview with Juan Gonzalez of the New York Daily News and Democracy Now!, Patterson and his wife acknowledged they each had intimate relationships with others during a rocky period in their marriage several years ago. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Tomorrow night, the U.S. invasion and occupation of Iraq will enter its sixth year. On Monday, at least 72 Iraqis were killed in violence around Iraq, including 42 Shiite worshippers and a suicide bombing in Karbala. 
Two U.S. troops were also killed, bringing the U.S. death toll to 3,390, 10 deaths away from the 4,000 mark. If the Bush administration's drive to invade Iraq was aided by corporate media cheerleading, the five-year mark today is being met with near silence by the corporate media. According to the Project for Excellence in Journalism, the U.S. occupation of Iraq has accounted for just 3% of news stories in television, print, and online media 